കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം നമസ്തെ so last night i had an interesting dream i was in the city i guess it was new york and i was i had just come from the music store and i had a backpack full of books on music including some of the books that i got the uh information i presented in the previous video on mastery of keyboards and i was walking through the city trying to find the bus to go home right and it's like nobody would tell me where the bus stop was and some people gave me wrong directions then i found myself in a part of the city that i recognized but to get to the bus station i had to go through a really bad part of town and there were all kinds of like drunks and rascal teenagers hanging around and kind of you know shifty looking people with big hats covering their eyes and <laughs> you know it was just looked like a bad scene and i had to get through this to get to the bus and so actually i woke up from this dream and it was time to get up anyway 3:30 so i got up but it reminds me of something very important well it reminds me of several things actually and we'll get to them one by one the first thing is that this world is a ghetto a ghetto is a, actually a, a south american word and it means a neighborhood that's so bad that if you're born into it you can't get out of it you're stuck because nobody from that kind of culture is going to get a good education a good job or medical care or any of the things they need to actually grow into a prosperous human being but it's not just the poor areas of town it's the same in the rich areas too <laughs> the people who get born into rich areas have a bunch of expectations laid on them that prevent them from gaining the knowledge they need to get out of their situation whatever it is and to attain enlightenment and real happiness and all that good stuff so everybody is trapped it's not just the poor people it's also the rich and this is what makes me feel so much compassionate that i can see very clearly that everybody is trapped by the stories they tell themselves about who they are and the only way to get out of this trap is to find a better story now the thing about it is there's true stories and there's untrue stories and some of the untrue stories can feel really good you know like i am a great person and i'm the best i don't what did that guy muhammad ali used to say i am the greatest huh? feels really good but it's not true because as soon as you say i that means the ego is there and the ego 999000 times out of a million the story that we tell about our ego is not true it's only true if it's predicated on 
the desire for enlightenment or liberation. And even then, it's only provisionally true until we actually reach that, isn't it? Until we actually reach enlightenment or liberation, anything we say about ourselves is a lie because the false ego does not really exist. Now, we've been over this on this channel and over it and over it and over it about all the ways in which the false ego is false. Huh? But ultimately, each one of us is responsible for doing the work to see this for themselves. Because the persistence of the false ego remains until you do that work. Just listening to me or listening to anybody talk about it isn't going to help one bit. I mean, maybe if you start to believe the story that human life is actually about enlightenment and liberation, that may help you a little bit. It may get you, give yourself permission to look into it and find out the actual way out of this, this ghetto, this conditioning, this programming of all these stories, these all false stories about who I am. But until you actually look into who am I, what am I? That means without any stories, but with eyes wide open. And accept what you see as being true. There's no way out of this ghetto. Because the first things you're going to see are not <laughs> very complimentary. The first thing you're going to see is, holy cow, man, this is my ego, my mind is just bullshit. It's full of so many untrue things, so many hurtful things, so many harmful ideas, and just plain stupid false ideas. So until we can get past that, uh, the fact that every time we look within and start to see what we really are, that we're, we're gonna be shocked by how off it is, how wrong it is, how harmful it is. Until we can get past that stage and start to see our actual nature, our true nature, our divinity, our spiritual nature as pure consciousness, uh, the first part of this journey is going to be really tough. And this is the reason why so few people get out of the ghetto of this individual conditioned existence and reach any kind of realization or enlightenment or liberation. You can look in a person's chart. You know, astrological chart reveals a lot about the karma that a person has brought with them into this life. And you start to see that actually life is completely fair. You know, I've seen a lot of people complain, oh, life isn't fair. You know, success is just based on luck and, and how you happen to get born and like that, who you know. And to a large extent, that's true until you start to look beneath the surface and look at the individual's karma. Because what happens in this life is not about what you do in this life. It's about what you did in the past life. That's the meaning of prarabdha. Prarabdha karma means the karma that is ripe for, to experience in this life. So that can't be from this life. That has to be from a previous life. And what we do in our attitudes and the way we take things in this life forms the basis of the next life. See, that's Sanchita karma. 
karma that is reserved for the next life. So when a person becomes enlightened, their previous karma from the past and the future karma for the next life are all destroyed. Why is it destroyed? Because the person realizes that <laughs> this I, <laughs> I can't help but laugh, this separate existence, this individuality, it simply doesn't exist. <laughs> it can't. There's no way. Because everything in the universe is interdependent. This body cannot exist even for a couple of minutes without air. It can't exist even for a couple of days without water. It can't exist even for a couple of weeks without food. And we all know that we need so many other things, shelter, clothing, education, transportation, so many other things that come from society around us. So the nature, the society, the whole environment has to be just the way it is so that this thing can exist. Huh? We're not independent. We're not individuals at all. We are totally dependent on our connections with the greater existence. And just think about it. This body is a descendant of our ancestors. And those ancestors have ancestors. And so on, back, 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 to some original cause, some original human beings. The Bible calls them Adam and Eve. The Vedas call them Manu. The Manus are the progenitors of mankind, the human beings that live on the earth planet. So without them, we wouldn't exist either. And without God, this whole world wouldn't exist. So what to speak of ourselves? So the whole idea of an independent individual is a total construct. It's not real, it's impossible. So then, who are we really? If we look into this and we reject all the false ideas, neti, 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 then you'll see there's only one possible answer, that I am consciousness. And if we look into the nature of consciousness, we also see that consciousness cannot be two. Consciousness cannot be dual. There cannot be more than one because consciousness has no boundaries. It has no form, no shape, no qualities, no beginning, no ending, no location in space or time. So consciousness must be Brahman. Consciousness must be the absolute, the God, the reality, the unconditioned primal being. Call it Tao, call it whatever you want. Huh? But this is the reality and this is what one awakens to when one attains enlightenment. So what does this mean? This means that our only business here is to get out. And once we get out, our only business is to help others get out. And that's the real purpose of human life. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.